MOC 12 seems to be getting harder and harder each update, which is a little worrying because it starts requiring higher investment from our teams to perform well. But if you can play smart and make good use of the provided buffs, then it can still be quite doable. The buff this time is a stacking debuff that gets applied to enemies every time you attack, and after 6 stacks, it will detonate an AoE shockwave. And then this resets every cycle. So every time a new turn starts, you have to restack from the beginning. Therefore, this favors characters that can attack multiple times. So I'm not showcasing a zero cycle or a one cycle clear this time. I'm going to show a relatively relatable clear of the MOC, with the star of the first half being Zila, who can get multiple attacks off with Resurgence, generating more debuff stacks, and the star of the second half being March 7th, who can generate lots and lots of stacks with their follow-up attacks. This is a response to the people who criticize my ranking of these characters on my tier list. I already have a couple Zeela 40k Pure Fiction runs on my channel, and I also have a video showcasing March 7th 40k Pure Fiction, so now it's time for me to show that they can perform in the MOC as well. My next video will probably show how you can use March 7th to easily beat Conundrum 12 of Golden Gears without using any infinite money glitch. Okay, so you want to keep track of the number at the top. Right now it says 3, and now it says 4. This is the stacking debuff, and once it hits 6, you'll see a shockwave. And right now I'm also trying to kill the adds first, because when both adds are down, the fat robot in the middle will enter a defense down state. As for Fushren's ultimate, I'm not using it here. I'm saving it for when the next turn starts, so that I can start generating stacks again. If I used it on the previous turn, it would have done nothing because I was already max stacks. And so, it's better to save it to generate stacks on this turn. Now, with the dragon, or the dinosaur, whatever it is, you want to break him as quickly as possible. Because until he is weakness broken, he takes a lot less damage. And so, you ideally want to bring on element characters or silver wolf so that you can break him as quickly as possible. And then deal with him that way. Then once he's dead, you can shift your focus to the defense down robot. Okay, with the second wave, do the same thing. Build stacks, focus down the weakness, toughness bar of the dinosaur, and then once it's weakness broken, you can get rid of it and then focus on Kokolia. Uh, I think I might have misplayed here, but I got bailed out. Um, because I wasn't really paying attention to the number on the top. I think in this situation it would have been smarter for me to attack with Sparkle rather than using her skill because now I can't guarantee 6 stacks, but luckily Ting Yun got hit, meaning I could action advance my Fushren and then generate a 6 stack. But that relied on a 1 in 4 chance of the right character being hit. So the smarter play would have been to attack with Sparkle instead of using Sparkle's skill. But anyways, I got bailed out because Ting Yun got hit, so I got lucky there. And then now I break the toughness bar of the dinosaur, use my Sealy ult to do big damage. And I should be able to clean up. I think here I actually attack Kakolia instead, because I wasn't certain that my Sealy could one-shot the broken dinosaur. And so I ended up deciding to shave down Kokolia's health bar instead. And then I'm saving the dinosaur for resurgence on the following turn because now I can build up stacks again quicker. So here I attack once, get one stack. Attack another time, get another stack. And so even if I can't kill off Kokolia with just raw damage, I can guarantee getting 6 stacks and having the shockwave there. So I should be able to kill Kokolia here with a Sela skill plus the shockwave. And yeah. So 3 cycles for the first half which is not bad with a sustain on the team. Now for the second half. This one is an E0, S0 Acheron with only one Nihility T 
teammate support, meaning Akron doesn't get her full buff because there's only one Nihility support. The reason I dropped the second Nihility support is because the only other options I have besides Pella are Welt and Gwenaifen. Both of them I don't think are too useful here. And so I decided that Ron May was going to work here with March 7th. I already explained why March 7th is here. Her follow-up attacks trigger so often that they can apply multiple, multiple stacks of the MOC debuff buff. So like every time March 7th attacks, she applies a debuff. And this counts towards Acheron's stack generation. Meaning March 7th becomes the ideal Acheron battery. And then Ron May is here because she buffs everyone's damage, but also because she lets you break their ice toughness bar much quicker and she extends their broken state. So because March 7th isn't the best solo sustain character, like she won't keep your team alive in a long drawn out fight. You have Ron May there to help support it by extending the duration of their broken state. You have March 7th freeze, also delaying the enemies, and you have March 7th shield. So all of this works together to actually provide you a quite a good safety net. Uh, so with Adventuring spawning now, the plan is still the same. It's build up as much stacks as possible, try to freeze and delay Adventuring as much as possible. The tricky part starts in phase 2 when he does the gamble thing where all your characters have to fight and fight the little dice. Ideally, you should be saving, at least in phase 2, you should be saving your March 7th ultimates and your Pella ultimates for when he does the gamble dice thing. I think in this run I trolled by preemptively using Pella's ultimate like every time it's up I kept using it when I should have been saving it. But if you save their ultimates, March 7th and Pella should ideally never fail because they do an AoE attack and they hit all four dice. Acheron should also never fail because her skill is AoE and can hit three of the four dice. The only one who cannot guarantee a success is Ron May because she can only hit one target at a time. If it's a number greater than six, so seven or more that you have to hit, then you can never win with Ron May. So in that scenario, you basically just use March 7 shield to protect Ron May so that she doesn't die from from the hits. But I don't play this out perfectly and this is only like reflecting on the fight afterwards. Something else to pay attention to in this fight if you're using Acheron like I am is to balance Acheron's own stacks with the debuff counter on the enemy. The longer you hold her ultimate, the more damage you can deal because there'll be more stacks on Adventurine. But the problem is if you hold too long with how fast you can battery Acheron, you may overcap on Acheron's own stacks. So it's a little balancing act. You don't want to overcap Acheron, but you also don't want to fire off her ultimate as the first thing on a turn because then Aventurine would have no debuff stacks on him. And so you ideally want to save your Acheron ult for when he has the most debuff stacks, but then you might be in a situation where Acheron is overcapped on her own stacks, and so you'll be wasting stack generation Anyways, with phase 2 starting, you can see that I wasted my Pella ultimate and she won't have it ready for when the gamble starts. This was a dumb move on my part, but I got completely bailed out by pure luck because Pella was able to somehow win the gamble with just a basic attack. But don't do what I did. Don't play stupid like me. Save your ultimate for this scenario. You can't rely on gambles all the time. Also, I shielded Pella here because I thought she would fail. And if I had Pella's ultimate ready, I would have shielded Ron May instead because I knew Ron May would fail. Because of my misplay, my Ron May falls really, really low in health when she shouldn't be anywhere near death if played correctly. Because we all know Ron May is the one that should fail this. And so Ron May should have been the one shielded, but because I trolled my Pella ult, I had to save Pella in case she failed because she's squishier than Ron May. Anyways, it's fine in the end because Ron May's action delay is so powerful that 
it stalls Aventurine and lets me get another March 7th shield off. Because of my stupidity, Ron May is a lot lower health than she should have been. Also, as you can see, I should have saved Pella's ult again, but I did the same mistake. Again, upon reflection, I realize now that I was such an idiot, but but showing you my misplays kind of makes it more genuine. Unless I'm going for zero cycle clears, I'm not like hell bent on showing perfect gameplay. So you can see that I mess up too. Sometimes you just you're you're on autopilot. But anyways, like even with so many misplays, I was still able to do decently well. Although the Akron ult couldn't kill here, I can guarantee a weakness break and with Ron May's extra break damage, the breaking will definitely secure a kill. And so I finished this MOC 12 with a total of 8 cycles taken, 3 on the first half, 5 on the second half.